start from the setup, and I kind of want to show you just the difference of those two just in the setup, and you'll see how similar their downswings are. Does one look a little more bent over than the other? Yeah. Now, granted, one of them's a driver and one of them's a six iron. Okay, so the driver's going to look a little more upright, but even if that was a six iron, he'd still be a little more upright. Okay, all right. Now, and that's the thing. With the one plane swing, okay, one of the things you want to be is bent over. Like we said, if I plan on, if I plan on having my arms go around me, I've got to somehow figure out a way for that club, for that swing path, that plane of the club to get back down to the ball. So I want to set up bent over. Okay, so now my clubs, I'm promoting my club, my swing plane to go around me and hit down on the ball. Okay, in a two plane swing, I want to be more upright. Okay, my shoulders are going to turn more shallow because my arms are going up. Does that make sense? If I turn my shoulders steep in a two plane swing and my arms go up, does that look pretty awkward? Mm -hmm. Not very athletic. Okay, so my first move is going to be that, and it's going to be chop. Okay, all right, so just in the setup alone, there's some significant differences. Okay, now as far as the grip, the one-plane swing favors, favors a strong grip. The two-plane swing favors a weaker to neutral grip. Okay, yes? Can you show a bend-over and a stand-up? Just reach the, that posture again. Okay, um, the, if, the good test to do... <coughs> If this is your golf ball, you want to go four feet from your golf ball, and you want to set up, I'm going to be off the stage, there you go, pretend that's four feet, and you want to be set up to where the shaft is in between the ball and the club. So if you're set up like this, and you look down the shaft, and you're outside that club, then you're too upright for a one-plane swing. Okay, two-plane swing, you want to be outside that club all day long. Does that make sense? Okay. One plane, you want to be bent down to where this shaft is perpendicular to your spine and pointing in between your golf ball and four feet outside. Okay, does that help? Yeah, okay. That helps. All right. Now, the shoulder turn, the shoulder turn for a one plane, it's kind of the same thing. We're bent down in between the ball and the shaft. We want to turn and have the butt of the shaft pointing in between the ball and that four foot, and that four foot area. Somewhere in between. Doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be somewhere in between it. For a two-plane swing, when they take it back, these, this, these shoulders, this shoulder line is going to be pointing just, you know, on the other side of the range. Okay, and that's perfectly fine. And if we, look at, if we look at these two swings, See how Chris's are a little steeper? Jerry's are a little more shallow. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So he is, he, his body has set, him, has set himself up for that left arm to be above the shoulders. Okay. His body and his turn has set himself up for his left arm to be on the shoulder line. Okay. When we start mixing one plane and two plane, that's where we really get in trouble, like we had said. And that's the thing. You have to know which one you are. So that way you don't mix stuff. Because that's the thing. You can mix it and still hit good golf shots, don't get me wrong, but you're going to be inconsistent, and you're never going to get to your full potential. Okay. Once you learn <clears throat> which one you are and know which direction to go as far as what to listen to when you read magazines and when you watch the golf channel, you'll make a significant change, and it'll be easier on your body. Does that make sense? What which about is, ball flight? What do you mean? I'm sorry, what do you mean? What about ball flight? It what? seems like the one plane would be a lower, a lower trajectory than the. It is, yes. The one plane, the one plane, they tend to hit it. Anybody who swings one plane tends to hit kind of a, a cut or a, a pretty straight ball. Okay. Uh, the two plane tends to hit a draw. Uh, tends to anyway. That's generally kind of how it works. Um, just because, <clears throat> just because in the two plane that drop motion is a little bit easier for, for better players. With amateurs, it's actually completely different. With amateurs, two plane, they tend to hit a cut. 
and then one plane they tend to hit a draw. It's actually completely opposite with amateurs, Correct. which is pretty interesting. Yes. Um, probably over the weekend, most of us watched the uh, Tigers turn. Yes. And, and also the short turn where Graham McDowell is taking his club back in the practice swing, and then it seems like he's going way left. Yes. Going this way. Yes. Even though he had a laid off club. Yes. Like um, Jerry Kelly does. Mm -hmm. what, what was he attempting to do? Well, here's the thing. Anytime. Is he the, programming himself to stay one plane? You, well, to, to get that club to, to come back over the top. Anytime the club is laid off here, okay, it's very easy to drop the club under plane. Okay, and what I mean by under plane is, if this is your plane, can everybody, can everybody see the ball? I don't know if everybody can see that. Okay, all right, and here's your swing plane. Okay, all right, my club is up here. All right, this is my setup. Now, when I mean under plane or underneath, I'm swinging from back here. So I've changed, if this is the ground and this is my swing plane, I've changed it and moved it to this direction. So I'm actually swinging in to out. Does that make sense? So the ball would tend to start right or hit hooks. Okay, so with Graham McDowell, he's laid off in a good position. Okay, so in what he probably a tendency he has is to get underneath and maybe hit blocks or hooks. So he's really training himself, since this club is laid off, quote unquote, to get back where the club is back on plane. So if I have this here again, whereas normally he probably turns and the club gets underneath here, okay, he's trying to turn and get the club back there on the club plane. Does that make sense? Kind of on that 45 degree angle. Okay, so then that's the thing, and that and that's knowing a little bit of it is knowing your tendencies as well. You know, when I was playing professionally, I got steep. I was everything was always over the top this way. So I was constantly trying to feel back underneath here. You know, and, and so it's just kind of knowing your tendency. And you know, maybe when Graham gets a little nervous, he gets underneath and hits a quick hook. You know, I don't know, but maybe that's part of his deal. So when the when it when the gets to crunch time and his nerves start to pick up, he can feel that and recognize that. So he really tries to feel that exaggerated over the top move. Okay, which feels over the top to him, but in reality puts him right back on plan. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Did somebody else have a question? I thought. No? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so here we are with the shoulders. You know, they're in a good spot here. And that's the thing. Most two plane swingers, okay, it's okay to have the club across the line. Okay, meaning pointing <laughs> in this direction. Okay, the reason why that is is because, like we talked about for professionals, when they're too plain, they tend to get too much underneath. They tend to hit blocks or hooks. So when the club is pointing this direction, if I just move my straight my arm straight down here, see how the club is back out in front of me? Okay, so that's why we, we're talking, that is probably why Jerry Kelly has more of a one-plane downswing because of his laid-off club at the top. Okay, all right, so Chris's is right on plane, kind of has a laid-off look. All right, if you go a little bit further. <coughs> you doing okay? You're doing a good job. Thanks, I appreciate that. <laughs> Stayed at the Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> Whoa, slow down. Come here. Wrong way. There we go, good. Okay, now. If you look at these two golf swings, okay, now they're both in very similar positions. All right, and I'll break down, I'll break down Steve Flesh's later because he really doesn't make any money and he needs somebody to tell him what to do. <laughs> like me. <laughs> but if you look at now these two positions, okay, the left arm is now pointing close to the shoe line here. Okay, the right arm is pointing almost right at the golf ball. Okay, left arm is pointing down the shoe line. Right arm is pointing right down at the golf ball. This is a perfect one plane position. And I'll show you a two plane in a minute. I was going to show you now. A two plane position, the two plane downswing, because the hips slide, because we're trying to shallow the clubs, generally the right arm is pointing out past the golf ball, and the left arm is pointing at the ball. Okay? See how these two positions are very similar? Okay, does that make sense? All right, so he has a two-plane backswing and has returned it into a one-plane downswing. All right? Another key factor is the right elbow. Anytime the right elbow is behind you on the backswing, it needs to stay 
behind you on the downswing. See how that brings the club into a good spot here? Okay, if I'm here and this, this right elbow gets out in front of me, okay, now my club is behind me, now I've got to flip. Okay, and the ball is going left, or it's going to be a block, or it's going to be a heel shank. I mean, all the stuff that you could possibly imagine that's not very good at all. Okay, so he's returned it into a one-plane downswing. Okay, all right, so there's a, lot, there's a lot of good tour players now. I would bet that most tour players that have the two-plane backswing have a one-plane downswing.